If the electric field becomes too high, we get what we call electric breakdown. We get a discharge into the air, and the reason for that is actually quite simple. If I have an electron here, and this is an electric field, the electron will start to accelerate in this direction. The electron will collide with nitrogen and oxygen molecules in the air, and if the electron has enough kinetic energy to ionize that molecule, then one electron will become two electrons, the original electron plus the electron from the ion. And if these now start to accelerate in this electric field, and if they collide with the molecules, and if they make an ion, then each one will become two electrons, and so you get an avalanche. And this avalanche is an electric breakdown, and you get a spark. When the ions that are formed become neutral again, they produce light. And that's what you see. That's the light that you see in the spark. And so sparks will occur typically at the, at sharp points, at areas where the curvature is strong, whereby the radius is very small. That's why the electric fields are the highest. How strong should the electric field be? Well, we can make a back-on-the-envelope calculation. If you take air of one atmosphere, dry air, at room temperature, then the, the electron, on average, on average, will have to travel about one micron, which is 10 to the minus six meters, between the collisions with the molecules. It's just a given. On average, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less, just a random process, of course. To ionize nitrogen, to ionize oxygen, takes energy. To ionize an oxygen molecule takes 12 and a half electron volts, and to ionize nitrogen takes about 15 electron volts. What is an electron volt? Well, an electron volt is a teeny weeny little amount of energy. It's 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Electron volt is actually a very nice unit of energy. Because once you have an electron at rest and it moves over a potential difference of one volt, it gains in kinetic energy. That's the definition of an electron volt. It gains one electron volt. It's the charge of the electron, which is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulomb, multiplied by one volt. And that gives you then the energy, one electron volt. And so, what it means then, let's assume that this number is 10 electron volt. We, we only want a back on the envelope calculation. So we want the electron to move over a potential difference delta V, which is roughly 10 volts, and we want it to do that over a distance delta X, which is 10 to the minus six meters, that's your one micron. And if that happens, you get this enough kinetic energy in the electron to cause an ion. So what electric field is required for that? That is delta V, the potential difference, divided by the delta X. So that is 10 divided by 10 to the minus six. So that's about 10 to the seven volts per meter. That's a very strong electric field. Uh, in reality, when we measure the electric fields near breakdown, it is more like three million volts per meter. But it's still very close. This was only a back-on-the-envelope calculation. So very roughly at one atmosphere air, room temperature, when the air is dry, we get electric breakdown at about three million volts per meter. When the ions neutralize, you see light. That's why sparks can be seen. They heat the air. They produce a little pressure wave. So you can also hear noise. 